When you want to add images to an HTML page, there's actually several ways that you can do it. So I'm going to look at the different HTML elements. This is completely separate from CSS. This is just how to render images in HTML. So we have the basic image tag. This was the original specification. And if I added a source attribute, there we go. There's my image being rendered on the page. The alt is my alternate text. So somebody who's got a screen reader would have this read to them in place of seeing the image. The figure element was added as part of the HTML5 specification, and it has an image inside of it as well. So if I was to add an image like this, um, the difference between a figure and an image is that figures come with descriptions. So if I was to add one here, Bob Belcher and Sterling Archer, there we are. This is the description for this image. Now, I could go into this paragraph and write the same text here. And visually to the user, they'd see the text appearing here. I could style it so that the image was here and the text was written underneath. But this provides some semantics. This provides the attachment between the image and the caption. It says to the browser, it says to the search engines that this specifically describes what this is. So it's like an enhanced version of the alternate text. It's there for screen readers as well as for people who are looking at the actual image. So we should put the alternate text in every time we have an image tag. So moving on to the picture element, this is the final one. Uh, with the picture element, you're actually allowed to define multiple sources for images. And the reason we do that is because of this media attribute. With the media attribute, and this is the one sort of connection to CSS, we can specify a media query to define when this particular image is going to appear. Uh, with source set, you can define some different sizes as well. I'm going to do uh, another video on responsive images and getting into more about source set. But for now, um, what we're going to do is just define a couple of images here. So there we go. I set the first one, source set, this image is appearing. Now type, you can define the media, the uh, the MIME type if you want. Uh, I'm not going to bother with it for this one. Uh, type for source attribute works really well for audio and video files when you're specifying it. For images, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. So I'm going to put this image in here as the first one. I'm going to set this as the or avatar, I guess was the name of the image. This is the second one. And then for my fallback, what I'm going to do is I'm going to point to an external source. So pick some dot photos slash 300, 200. That sounds good. Okay, so I have three images defined in here. The first one is showing up, but I haven't defined anything for the media. So I'm going to put in media queries here to say, okay, if the screen is really wide, this is the image I want to show. If it's narrow, this is the one I want to show. And then if it's something in between, it's going to be this. So inside of here, my media query, I'm going to say uh, for the first one, this was the wide one. So my min width, I'm going to say 800 pixels. That's the media query that's going to apply for this image. For this one, I'm going to set max width to, let's say, uh, 600 pixels. And then if it's something in between, neither one of these images are going to work. It should fall back to this. So let's refresh this page. Okay, there we are. So that is, and here we are in between. So this is below 600 pixels. We get the Deadpool avatar going above that, above 600. There we are. And then when we get to 800, it should switch over to the other Bob Belcher. And there it is. So I've done a very simple example here with the media queries. I will do another video on responsive images and talk a lot more about these properties. But for now, I just want you to understand that there's an image, there's an image with a figure. So that is a image that has a description that's required. Think of uh, textbooks where you get a numbered description beneath the photo.
That's what the figure with the image is. And then we've got the picture element that allows you to define multiple ones as well as a fallback image if neither of these work. All right, hope that helps you out. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.